Hey, SpaghettiOs. You like SpaghettiOs? Open up anyone's cupboard and chances are you'll find a stash of cans. Cans of soup, cans of vegetables, even cans of Spam. Well, here are the 10 once popular canned foods that no one eats anymore. Ooh, look, they have canned bread. Smurfs Chef Boyardee. New Smurf pasta from Chef Boyardee. It's Smurfy good for you. Chef Boyardee is one of the most popular brands of canned pasta sold in the United States. The pasta is offered in a variety of flavors and comes in different shapes such as squares, triangles, and tubes. The pasta was first introduced to the United States in the 1950s and today is sold in stores right across the country. There was an increase in movie tie-ins with popular foods during the 1970s, 80s, and 90s, especially junk food. Popular movie characters and franchises could be seen on just about any kind of food packaging you can think of, from cereal boxes to soda cans. Some tie-ins were more well-liked and tasty than others. Another movie-related dish introduced in the 1980s was Chef Boyardee's Smurfs Beef Ravioli and Pasta. Fortunately, despite the vibrant cartoon characters that adorned each vivid blue container, the pasta within appeared to be very typical. Instead, Chef Boyardee was only capitalizing on the decade-long Smurfs fad that swept over the United States. Ooh, rats! Outsmurfed again! While Chef Boyardee's canned ravioli is still available today, the Smurfs branded can went out of style many years ago. Chef Boyardee cans have featured a number of different tie-in characters throughout the years, but this is one 1980s food that isn't going to return anytime soon. Pudding in a can. Mike! I found a chocolate pudding! Pudding is a classic dessert that takes only minutes to make and tastes like childhood for the many people who grew up eating it. The secret to its velvety smooth texture is a blend of ingredients which can vary depending on the brand. The result is a sweet and creamy dessert that is perfect for a quick snack or as a high energy dessert when you're craving something sweet. Some of the best and most popular flavors include chocolate, vanilla, and lemon and can come in a variety of other flavors. If you didn't eat pudding cups as a snack in the 1970s and 80s, 80s, you probably don't miss the can version, since you might not have even been aware that it existed. Snack packs of canned pudding were swapped out with more modern packaging that wouldn't cut, nick, or scratch the lips and fingers of eaters. The Hunt Snack Pack was originally released in 1968, after the company created a milk pudding that could be stored for a long time. All of a sudden, preparing thick pudding over a hot stove for an hour was no longer necessary for people in search of a delicious dessert. I love it. It is simply awesome. Instead, they could grab a can and lift them at a lid. Hunt developed a mascot at the same time as the pudding snack cans, a lovable horse named Snack Pack. The mascot not only advertised the food, but also cautioned kids against playing with or licking the lid, or even holding it in their hands. The hazardous cans were eventually switched out to plastic cups identical to the ones still in use today. After seeing the retro snack, Stranger Things fans begged that the retro packaging be made available again. Customers may see soon be able to go back in time to the days where your lunchbox snack pack pudding carried some risk. Canned bacon. What I said was, give me all the bacon and eggs you have. Some people say that bacon is the food of the gods. Amen. The taste, the smell, the fat, it's all magic. But when it comes to cooking bacon, the magic can get a little tricky. Bacon is one of the most sought after meats in the world. It's made from the hind legs of a hog, cured and smoked. It's served in strips or in whole hog style in a variety of ways, as a side, in a sandwich, or as a main dish. Like other canned meats, canned bacon was probably created to make it simpler to transport, store, and prepare. Although it used to be very common, bacon in a can is now difficult to locate and unlikely to be displayed on a grocery shop shelf. While a few companies still produce canned bacon now, Yoder's is the most widely available. The Amish-owned family company is situated in Ohio and produces a variety of products, including a line of canned beef for long-term food storage as well as for use when camping or traveling. Their canned bacon is completely cooked and drained. The bacon is wrapped in paper and placed inside the can, not filled with liquid. It'll resemble the bacon in a pre-cooked package when you take it out and unroll it, only this bacon can be kept for up to 10 years. Sack of sauce and a can of meat. Dude, shut up! That is awesome sauce! Incredible advancements in canned beef dinners were commonplace in the 70s. One such advancement was the hilariously named sack of sauce in a can of meat. What did you say?
a brand new combination created exclusively by Oscar Mayer. It prevented the taste of the sauce and meat from blending and becoming diluted during storage. Families could keep a few beef and pork cans on hand so they could make mouth-watering barbecue burgers in only seven minutes. Families loved the mild, delicious barbecue sauce, which was made with tomato sauce, sugar, vinegar, celery, Worcestershire sauce, salt, onion, and other unique seasonings. While this new method of packaging was innovative at the time, it's definitely fallen out of favor with the general public. And can we talk about the name for a sec? We can't decide if the naming of this product was something out of a dystopian science fiction movie or something the military would give its troops abroad. English breakfast in a can. Mr. Breakfast? You got it. I'm a walking and talking plate of breakfast. Some say the most significant meal of the day is breakfast. It's the first thing you eat in the morning and sets the mood for the rest of the day. It's the meal that helps keeps your energy level high and your appetite at bay until lunch. But what if that breakfast comes from a can? A full English breakfast is a traditional meal of bacon, sausage, eggs, and more, typically served with toast and tea. This traditional meal has been a staple in the United Kingdom for centuries and has spread to other countries around the world such as the United States and Canada. Yet, while the full English breakfast is a well-known staple of British cuisine, the origin of this meal is often a topic of debate among food historians. Some say that the full English breakfast was first served in London's Savoy Hotel in 1888, while others say that the full English breakfast was first served at the Grafton Hotel in Wrexham, Wales in the 1880s. In any case, the meal certainly is iconic. If you think McDonald's all-day breakfast is a horrible idea, we have something that will make you run screaming for the hills. A complete English breakfast in a can. Be prepared for a pre-mixed mixture of baked beans, sausage, tiny mushrooms, sliced pork, bacon, oats, and something called egg nuggets to be included in it. Ugh. Yeah. Ew. Ugh, gross, right guys? Now that we're thinking about it, McDonald's breakfast sounds pretty good. Rattlesnake. You know what I like? The sandwich. It's snake meat. The rattlesnake is one of the most unique and dangerous animals in the world. They're capable of delivering an incredibly painful bite, and their strike can knock a human off their feet. It definitely sounds bad. Okay. They're also able to deliver their young via live birth, which makes them one of only a handful of reptiles in the world capable of doing so. Their venom is one of the most potent in the world, and the sound they make strikes fear into many. Not many people around the world would be so excited to eat snake. But if you are one of the few, there is, of course, a canned variety of this strange food as well. What is the worst aspect of eating rattlesnakes from a can? Apparently, there are quite a few bones. Now, hold that thought. The fact that you're eating a rattlesnake from a can in the first place isn't the worst aspect. The only snakes which belong in cans are the phony, springy gag snakes that frighten unwary individuals searching for some delectable nuts or peanut brittle. Reindeer. What are you laughing at? Rudolph. You may only think of reindeer as they pertain to Santa Claus, but reindeer meat is a healthy and delicious alternative to traditional meats. Red meats like reindeer are rich in protein and iron. Omega-3 fatty acids, which are excellent for your heart and brain, are also abundant in it. For those who care about sustainability in the environment, reindeer meat is an excellent option. And yes, reindeer can be eaten straight from a can, which is a thought that would horrify and scar any child who knows all of Santa's reindeer by name. No! Oh God! Despite the fact that eating reindeer is totally fine in many parts of the world, including Alaska, most people would like to continue eating animals that didn't fly through the sky, bringing us presents as kids. Over the years, reindeer meat has become a popular food item. People are slowly finding out just how delicious it is, and they're eagerly trying it for themselves. Some people have even decided to raise their own reindeer, so they can have reindeer meat whenever they want. It can be a little tricky to find reindeer meat, but you can usually find it at specialty markets or you can order it online. If you want some reindeer meat that'll last you throughout the whole year, you can always try and track down a can of reindeer meat. While it's hard to find outside of Alaska, it may be a worthy purchase if you really like the taste of reindeer. Tongue. What about tongue? No. Tongue. For many, the animal's tongue has been considered an inedible organ. 
Can't taste my freaking tongue, Kay. But chefs and scientists have been experimenting with tongue as a food for years. The best known examples of tongue in the food industry are probably tongue empanadas and tongue sandwiches. But there are other ways that chefs are using tongues in their dishes. Truthfully, tongue, from cows, oxen, lambs, sheep, etc., is a delicacy that can be found on the menus of many upscale restaurants. But it needs to be well prepared and of good quality. It's a hard, peculiar looking organ that's often used in Chinese, Korean, Korean and Hispanic cooking. The texture, chewy and soft, is similar to that of beef and poultry, and it's often described as a cross between meat and fish. Cans and tongues obviously don't mix. Anyone who's tried to lick the sauce off of one too many SpaghettiOs containers will know this lesson. However, if you're looking for tongue in a can, it's rather easy to find if you want to give it a try. Brown bread. Bread makes you fat. Bread makes you fat? Brown bread is another regional can dish that was never popular in the greater United States. In the New England region, brown bread in cans was a pantry essential that could be purchased with or without raisins. Unlike some of the other canned goods on this list, canned brown bread was once almost as popular as the fresh variation. It's advertised as a tasty, sweet treat in addition to being a quick and easy method to get a loaf of bread on the table. B&M, the company that produces the well-known bread, also cans a range of meats, fish, and maize. B&M was founded in 1867, when exactly bread was added to the menu is unknown. If you've never eaten bread from a can, you might be more than a little curious. After opening the can, resist the urge to grab a spoon. Instead, you have to pry open the can from both the top and bottom. The soft loaf will then slip out of the container and be ready for slicing after a little shaking. Shake it, baby! Shake it! It tastes wonderful on its own or when covered with cream cheese, butter, or jam. Even though canned brown bread is still offered in New England, it's definitely lost part of its appeal and has never been readily accessible elsewhere. Campbell's Pepper Pot Soup I hate black pepper! One of the best ways to warm yourself up on a cold winter day is with a bowl of soup. Soup is a great way to pack in vegetables and plant-based protein, making it a healthy and warming meal. There are countless soup recipes around the world, but some have fallen out of favor when it comes to the canned variety. This next canned meal, like B&M's brown bread, probably lost favor since it was primarily a regional cuisine. Philadelphians have consumed pepper pot soup regularly for at least a century. It used to be offered for sale in bars and by street sellers. By capitalizing on Philadelphia's famous soup, Campbell's, which has long been produced in adjacent New Jersey, profited from the traditional recipe. In 1899, they started to can their own pepper pot soup. Midway through the 20th century, the soup started to lose popularity, but for several more decades, Campbell's produced its version. To the dismay of devoted Philadelphians, the product was eventually withdrawn in 2010, more than a century after it was initially made available by Campbell's. No! Just go home. No! However, there are several imitation recipes online if you're itching to try it. Thanks for watching right to the end. You're the best, and the best deserves more. So check out more great videos.